Revenge by Jason Dwayne Cockerham. This book is for audiences 13 and up. Chapter 6 Betrayal Nina here. After everything, I'm home looking in the mirror. After a second, I turn away. I told them to buzz off, but they stayed close because they cared. Ella almost got killed. I glance back at the reflection, this time thinking of Nick. How could he do that? To me, I was his friend. There was a time when we might have been more. I turn away from the reflection's accusing eyes. I flop down on my bed, trying to get some sleep. You're my best friend, a voice from the past says. I turn in my bed, trying not to think of another betrayal in my life. This one, I experienced from the other side. Trying to get to sleep, I only succeed in falling into a restless state that is not quite deep enough to be dream, more like half sleep, half memory. E here. I am up late making adjustments to my remaining four robots. As I am doing so, memories of the past come flowing into my mind, reminding me why I chose Nina to be the first target. I was playing with a bouncy red kickball, alone on the playground as usual, when a fox came up to me. I'm Nina. I told the pink bunny who was spending recess alone. I'm E, I told her. I actually had told her my real name. But as I said before, no one will find out what it is again. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, I said back to him. She didn't laugh at my name like most other animals I've met. Feeling awkward due to the drawn-out pause... I asked, do you want to play ball? Sure. Uh, okay. We can bounce it to each other. Okay. He bounced the ball my direction, and I batted it with a paw, sending it bouncing back to him. And I caught it. Then I bounced it to her once again. And I nosed it into the air towards him. As we kept bouncing the ball to each other, we talked. So... What's your favorite color? Ping, I mean red. What's your favorite color? Blue. What's your favorite thing to do at recess? Play hopscotch. What's yours? I like tag, or hide and seek tag. Soon the bell rang, and we had to go to class. After school that day, Nina and I hung out again. We played on the playground for a while, First, swinging on the swings, then running through the tunnels, finally spinning on the merry-go-round. We spun until we got sick, then we said our goodbyes and walked home trying not to throw up. The next day at recess, I asked the pink bunny, so what's your power? Um, I don't really have a power. What? what? Everybody has a power. Not me. What's your power? My power is to make projections of myself. So, here's a game we can play. Try to guess which one is me. With that, many foxes, all looking exactly like Nina, dash out in many different directions. Each one takes a different pose. One sitting, one standing, one pointing, one taking a step, another licking the air, and a few of them making goofy faces. How about this one? I said as I tagged her, but my hand went right through her, and she disappeared. Uh, okay, not that one. He tagged another of the fake me's with the same result. How about this one then? When that one disappeared, he turned. Okay, how about this one? This one? This one's gotta be it. But each one disappeared. One by one, he kept tagging them, 
and they kept disappearing. Finally, only three were left. I thought for a moment. This one? Hey, gotcha. Hey, you found me. The real me. Now try it again. This time, I made more copies of myself. Just for fun, I also added in some copies of him. Mm hmm? So you can make a projection of whatever you want? That is not exactly correct, but I did not want to answer him at the time. When no answer came, he said, Ah, I see. If you speak, you'll give away your position, won't you? That is true. He tagged a number of different me's until he finally found the real me. A couple of days later, Nina and I were playing tag out in my front yard when my mom came home. Oh, you have a friend over. My mom remarked as she walked into the house. Mom, this is Nina. Nina, this is my mom. Pleasure to meet you, I said. Nice to meet you. His mom said. We continue playing until it gets dark. Hey mom, can she eat with us? Yes, if she wants to. How about it? Want to have dinner with us? Uh, sure. We all sat down to a meal of carrot stew. The three of us talked about various topics while we ate. How school went, how work went, the weather, the local sports team. After we were done, Nina said, I need to get back home. Thank you for the meal. You're welcome, my mom said. Nina then walked out the door and in the direction of her house. Bye. Bye. After a minute, my mom teased. Looks like somebody's got a girlfriend. She's not my girlfriend. Just a friend. The next day, we were playing competitive hopscotch at the playground. We made up the point system as we went. He was beating me at hopscotch, but I was hanging in there and at least keeping it interesting. Considering I've seen him playing hopscotch nearly every day at recess, I was doing pretty well just to keep up. We take a breather before the final three rounds. That's when I told her, Nina, you're my best friend. Then let me win, I said, smiling. No way, you have to earn that. I tried my best those last three rounds, but he won the game. Wanna play again? Nah, let's play some hide and seek tag. I let him hide first, then tracking his scent, I found him in one of the tunnels. Tagging him was quite a bit harder. He zipped around the playground like a lightning bolt. Chasing after him, I could barely keep up. He was pulling away as we were zigzagging around the playground equipment. Then he went around the merry-go-round and straight into the field beside the playground. That's when I caught up and managed to tag him. Next. Nina hid while I counted. I then tried to find her. I searched everything, but never found her. Turns out, she was behind a tree at the edge of the boundaries we set. Then, after I checked every hiding spot on the playground, I walked towards the other boundary. She took the opportunity to sneak under one of the playground platforms we kept playing till dark. It was the day before my birthday when everything changed. The plan for my birthday was for me and Nina to grab some pizza and hit the arcade. My mom would be there too, of course, but she wouldn't be playing any of the games. Today, however, was a day of school. I grabbed the book for my next class and went in. Claw and the two wolves were talking to Nina. You two gonna hang out? Wolfenstein asked. Antonio added, Gonna play games together? The bear chimed in. Gonna go to the loser's birthday party? <laughs> Have fun, 
probably gonna suck. Nina responded, Shut up! I'm just pretending to be his friend. I'm not really planning to go to his birthday party. That'd be the worst. I continued to walk into the classroom and sat down at my desk. Oh, I think he heard you, Antonio remarked. He didn't look at me. The whole class period, he stared into the book, or at the board, or at the teacher. I knew he had heard what I said, and there was no taking it back. The day of my birthday party came. Me and my mom went to the pizza joint next to the arcade and ordered a large cheese pizza. My mom asked me, Where is your friend, Nina? I looked down as I answered. I don't think she'll be able to make it. Oh, that's a shame. As we waited on the pizza, I honestly hoped that Nina would show up. I was hoping that she would tell me she was lying to them, so they wouldn't make fun of her. I don't know if I could have believed her, but I still wanted her to show up and say it. The pizza cooked, and my mom brought it to the table. I ate two slices in silence. Then my mom said, Are you ready to play games? She had a paw full of quarters. Uh, yeah. I held my paws out, and she dropped the quarters in my paws. Then I ran over to the games and started playing. It wasn't nearly as fun playing alone. But I smiled anyway, to make my mom think I was happy. When the coins were spent, we walked home. Mom was carrying the pizza. I twisted in my bed for a while. I only said it to get them off my back, but he was right there, and I couldn't unsay it. I should have told him the truth and asked for his forgiveness, but I was scared that he already hated me, that he wouldn't believe me or trust me again. Nowadays, I don't know where he is. There's no chance to set things right. I then thought about Nick. I dyed my tail blue because it is your favorite color, he had told me once. That thought brought me back to the moment. I had gone to a school dance because I had nothing better to do. I didn't really dance back then, but like other school dances, I went, hung out with friends, we talked, ate snacks, and we enjoyed some of the songs. Nick was at one of them. Like me, he didn't dance. He had banged to a few songs, but mostly he was just hanging out with friends. We were talking. I can't remember what about anymore. Then, a slow song came on, and the lights were on someone else. He leaned in close and admitted, I dyed my tail blue because it is your favorite color. I wanted to tell him that I liked him, but I was nervous, so I said, It looks good. He moved shortly afterwards, and I never got a chance to confess how much I cared for him. After today, though, I don't think I'll be able to trust him ever again. E here. I was always the one animals made fun of. One day, a new kid moved here temporarily, a turtle. Claw and the wolves were relentless. At first, I'll admit, it felt good to have them off my back for a while. Then, one day, Claw and the wolves were making fun of him running slowly in gym class. I laughed and agreed. I wish I could say that it never happened, or at least that it was a one-time thing, but it happened several times. Remembering this, I start work on what I called the final command, the idea being that I say, all robots, Execute the final command. At this, it ends. Evil dies, and the robots explode. But first, 
vengeance. Ella here. Nearly a month ago, the day after Mrs. Wooster went after Claw, I ran into her again. Um, can we talk? She asked. Um, sure. What do you want to talk about? Can I ask what exactly happened with your friend? Come on. There's a good spot I know of for remembering, I said as I headed for the river. I told her everything that happened with my two best friends when I lived at the lake. It's actually the reason I moved here. So I could get away from the memories and start over. I'm sorry that happened. Over the next couple weeks, we talked more. Their father abandoned us when they were younger. She told me. I did my best. Juggling a job and two pups. When they started into drugs, I... She looked ashamed admitting this. Didn't even realize it until months later. By then, it was too late. They were addicted, and they knew they could get away with it. That they could get around me. I tried to stop them. I threw the drugs out and grounded them. The trouble was that for every time I caught them, they would get away with it five more times. When they got fed up with me grounding them, they would run away. Sometimes there's nothing anybody can do. We couldn't bring back those we lost, those we missed, sometimes so much it hurt, but just talking with each other, admitting regrets and mistakes, admitting that we could have done better and we wish we had, and having the other to force us to admit that maybe we couldn't have done better without going to crazy extremes, made both of us, I think feel better. If nothing else, we could cry with each other rather than alone. In the present, since I was shot in the back leg, for a while I have to do physical therapy. I do exercises every day to re-strengthen the leg as it heals. Claw has been at my house every day being a drill sergeant, pushing me to do more. Sometimes I have to just refuse to do more and to remind him that my leg is still healing. He keeps me honest, though. Nina's been asking about you every day, Claw mentioned. Why hasn't she come herself to ask? Is she still not able to get here because of her shoulder? Partly the shoulder makes it hard for her to get here. I think she's afraid you're mad at her, though. Tilting my head, I tell him, I'm not. You should tell her that. I have, he says with a shrug. Claw has been Nina's drill sergeant every day, too. One night, Mrs. Wooster brought me flowers of different colors. She had been over one time already since the injury which is when I told her about what had happened. She had asked about my favorite flower, and I had told her, I don't have a favorite. I love when they're bunched together and you get all different colors. Thank you. She nodded. How is your leg? Almost back to normal. Good. As she walks out the door, she tells me, Send word if you need anything. Thanks, I will. E here. Today, I decide to relax. I went to the bar and ordered a drink. I hear a bunch of talking, but none of it's to me. I've been made fun of so many times, it was best not to talk to anyone. So instead of trying to talk to the old coyote next to me, I ordered myself another drink. A little less awkward feeling, I struck up a conversation with the old coyote. Another old guy next to him joined the conversation. Then the topic changed to the old days, something I had nothing to add about. So it became a conversation between the two of them. 
I listened, but soon the two of them weren't even looking at me. Story of my life, I think bitterly as I sip on my third drink. That's when it kinda hit me. I don't really belong here, and I never will. Even if the animals in the bar aren't being mean, a feeling of hatred bubbles up inside me. At this point, fair or unfair, my emotional response to meeting animals is to get this hatred for them rising up in me. It's a reaction built up from many bad experiences. A preemptive reaction because that's always what's happened. They met me and they hated me. I will never be able to let anyone in anymore. I'm gonna live a lonely life for the rest of it because of the first part, and I hate that. I put money down on the bar for the drinks and the tip, and I get up to walk out. Ella here. One day, feeling antsy from being at home constantly, I carefully walked to the bar. After sipping on a drink for a minute, I gulp the rest of it down, turn to the stranger next to me, and ask, Wanna dance? He is standing facing the door at this moment. Or were you leaving? Huh? He is a pink bunny who is taken by surprise by my sudden invitation. After a moment of being stunned, he asks, suspicious, Why would you want to dance with me? I smile. Why not? Uh, I can't dance very well. But I guess I'll try if you want to. Great! I'm still recovering from an injury, so I probably won't be very good either. He dances awkwardly at first, like he hasn't been on a dance floor in a while. I haven't danced since I was shot by the laser, so I take it easy at first. He stays for a second song and loosens up as the song plays on. I also dance a little more energetically as I figure out what my leg can take. As we dance, I tell him, you're not nearly as bad as you made yourself out to be. Thanks, although I'm not nearly as good as you. I'm on the dance floor a lot. After the second song, he leaves the dance floor. I follow him off saying, you should stay for one more. Give me a second, he says panting. I stand with him just off the dance floor while he catches his breath. Then we get caught up in talking, eventually ending up outside. We talk about the night of the tornado. Your neighbors just came in? He questions. It was a bad storm. Besides, we're all pretty close. We look out for one another. Sarah, the owl, has been making me dinner ever since I was shot by a laser. Shot by a laser? I told him about the attempted bank robbery and the cat who shot me with a laser. I've been home since then, so I needed to get out and have a little fun. I've been working pretty hard on a project myself. I needed a break. That led the conversation into winter and sledding. I haven't sledded in forever. He states, You should come out and sled with me during a snowstorm. For the first time in years, I feel happy. Not the happiness that I feel when I'm excited about getting revenge, but real, non-harmful happiness. One more dance? She questions. Sure. My name's Ella, she says walking back inside. I'm E. Afterwards, as I walk towards home, I think, it's a shame that I didn't meet her years ago. Ella here. The next day, Nina finally came over. She seemed bothered by something. Ella, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm sorry for not believing you, for telling you to buzz off, for you getting hurt. I'm so sorry.
I already forgave you a long time ago, and it's not your fault I got hurt. How is your leg? Almost completely healed. How about your shoulder? It's fine now. Good. In the next chapter, on a dark, stormy night, we check out if Jim's Beer and Snacks is really haunted. February 2024 More from this author Dream Trap, a story involving dog-fighting mythical creatures and dream magic. The story continues with episodes 13 through 24, releasing on the 1st and 16th of each month, starting in July 2023. Read it on Amazon's Kindle Vela. Since I have heard about people having problems searching for Kindle Vela stories on Amazon, I would recommend googling Kindle Vela and going to the Kindle Vela homepage. It's a separate homepage featuring all the Kindle Vela stories you've followed. Another note, I have had problems in the past using my phone's search button when searching for stories, so I recommend clicking on the website's search button. Another note, when you follow a story, the website says you will be notified about new episodes. I have followed many Kindle Vela stories and have never once been notified about new episodes. But since following a story means it will be on the Kindle Vela homepage, it is easy to find and check if it has new episodes.